Hey everyone, I'm Sumi. Welcome to my channel, The Tarka Project, where I show you how to make delicious vegan Indian food. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make the yummiest takeout classic, chana masala. So let's get cooking. So here, I'm just roughly chopping around one large beef steak tomato, chopping my onions roughly once again, having my garlic cloves, and I'm going to peel my one inch cube of ginger and just cut it into two. To start my process, I'm going to take a pan on medium high heat, to which I'm adding around a teaspoon of cooking oil. You can use any oil of your choice as long as it's flavorless. To this, I'm gonna add my ginger, my garlic cloves, cook this for around 10 seconds. I'm gonna add my chopped onions. Salt it to speed up the cooking process. I'm gonna give this around 10 to 20 seconds and add my roughly chopped tomatoes. So we're not trying to like cook down anything. We just want to get it to a point where the tomatoes get a little mushy. Doing this process will make sure that your gravy doesn't end up being bitter at the end. So we just want to cook all of this till the tomatoes break down. So as you can see, my tomatoes are a little mushy and my garlic cloves have a light golden color to them. So I'm going to turn off my element and let this cool before I blend it. Now my ingredients are all cooled down. I'm going to add this to my blender jar here. To do this, I'm also going to add around five to six leaves of mint. It adds an amazing freshness to the recipe. My mint leaves are huge and that's why I'm using five, but if you have small mint leaves, you can add around eight to 10. And I'm also going to add around two tablespoons of cilantro and one Thai green chili. This is completely optional. I'm gonna blend all of this till it gets to a really nice creamy consistency, as you can see here. Take a pan on medium high heat. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of oil. You can add more oil because that's what they do at restaurants, but I keep my limit at two tablespoons. To this, I'm gonna add around a teaspoon of cumin seeds, some fennel seeds, cinnamon sticks, black cardamom, and green cardamom pods. Make sure to open up your green cardamom pod before adding it so it releases its flavor. So I'm gonna toast this in my oil for around 20 seconds till it gets super fragrant. At this point, I'm gonna add my blended ingredients. Be very careful at this step. A good tip is to lower the heat to the lowest possible so that it doesn't splash on your face or your camera. To this, I'm also gonna add around a tablespoon of tomato paste. This is mostly to bring out the red color in the gravy. I'm gonna give everything a good mix and bring the heat back up to medium high. I'm gonna cook this for around two minutes before I add my powdered spices. So here I'm adding some turmeric powder, dried coriander seed powder, red chili powder, and Kashmiri red chili powder. So Kashmiri red chili powder doesn't have too much heat. Once again, it's for that bright red color that you usually see in Indian dishes. So I'm going to mix all of this till it's well combined and stir continuously and patiently for around seven to eight minutes till it starts bubbling on the edges. As you can see, my gravy is bubbling on the edges, which means it's ready for the chickpeas. I'm adding canned chickpeas because it's just super convenient, but if you wanna pressure cook your dry chickpeas, that works as well. So I'm gonna give all of this a really nice mix as you can see, it's pretty thick right now, so I'm gonna add some water to loosen the gravy up. I'm also going to add a teaspoon of garam masala for that extra flavor. And now I'm gonna add some salt. I'm going to bring this mixture to a boil, and once it's bubbling, I'm gonna reduce the heat to low, cover it with the lid. So I'm gonna cook this for around 15 to 20 minutes till the very powerful flavors like garlic and tomato blend seamlessly. So it's been 20 minutes. 
and you can also see like the chickpeas have gotten a little swollen that's when you know they've absorbed all the flavors if you want to make the gravy a little thicker you can even mush down the chickpeas with a wooden spoon here I made some saffron rice and a little salad to go along with my chickpeas. If you want the recipe for the saffron rice, it's in my website, thetarkaproject.com, and the link is in the description box below. And that's the finished recipe. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more vegan Indian recipes. So that was my chana masala. I like to serve mine up with some saffron rice and a little salad like you saw in the video. But obviously feel free to serve it however you like. Just knowing how to make this recipe has saved me so much in takeout costs and that's why I wanted to share my secrets with you guys. Let me know in the comments uh, what you like to eat your chana masala with. And if you tried this recipe, let me know how it turned out because I really want to hear from you guys. And I'll see you another time with another recipe. Bye!